Hey folks, we're back. Hey, hey now. Well, they say, hey now. I'm getting there. I already know what that tie is. But let me introduce somebody, well, not new. We can't go with new. But he has a title now, a different one. Mm -hmm. He is councilman-elect, right? Until it's sworn in, you're a councilman. Oh, councilman-elect. Councilman-elect. Sir. Sir William Whaley is with us this morning. <laughs> Thank you very congratulations much. Congratulations. I'm not on, sure whether it's sympathy or congratulations, but congrats, I do appreciate the Congratulations. Dr. Whaley will now be, January of next year, one of the council members in Blue Ridge. He has nothing else to do. Uh, if he's one not of my advisors was Dr. Tidman, who doesn't even live in the city, and he read all the ads. Helped. <laughs> he helped. Uh, He's partially to get blamed for this, you know. If it doesn't go well, it's Tidman's fault because he helped write the ads. I'll send you flowers. World Traveler, okay, World Traveler um, has worked. And how many hockey teams? Because this is the Thrashers. How many, before we get started, well, how many hockey two teams? Two hockey teams. I, I know okay. the answer, but I'm going to okay. let Two hockey teams, two professional soccer teams, one professional football team. Right. And, uh, oh, by the way, I know this is Ask the Doc, but don't forget, we have a big parade downtown this morning. The Braves. The Braves oh, they parade. parade. Oh, in yeah. Atlanta, you mean? Yeah. Downtown. Well, not downtown here. I, 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 down, I, I, when I say downtown, downtown, oh, downtown. Oh, yeah, because I was Atlanta. thinking they haven't told me. We could have one here if we want, but the Braves have a big parade. Dr. William Whaley, Dr. Raymond Timmon, thank you for being here. We're at Blue Ridge Circuit World. This is a Thrashers. That is the Atlanta Thrashers. So tell us a little bit about the tie this morning. All right. Well, first of all, I just fell. I ran across it down there and all that stuff we moved from Atlanta five, six <laughs> years ago. And you hadn't seen this tie. But when we get to the second question, it's going to begin. You'll understand why I've got this tie on. So you want to go? You ready to go to work? I'm, I'm ready. Let me explain to you about this first question because sometimes you say these questions. This question here came to me in the Atlanta office from a large OBGYN practice, and it sort of wraps itself around the COVID medical excuse. And what, when would a, a, a physician want to give, a, give a, an excuse to someone not to take the COVID vaccine that clearly is required to take it by the job that they have. So let's begin with this. This comes from a high-risk OBGYN physician practice in Atlanta that I see a lot of their patients with iron deficiency and thrombocytopenia. This was the question. We have a 27-year-old employee, an operating room nurse, mm -hmm. with a history of henoch schonlein purpura at age 11. Now, I know you know what that is. Yeah, sure. With renal disease, which cleared, but only after one year. She has one child and is anxious to have another. That's an important part of this the COVID factor. Our practice is in a hospital that requires COVID-19 immunizations for all staff unless there is a medical indication and excuse Listen to this part. Dr. Tidman has full thought about this. That will pass review by the Infection Control Committee. Serenity now. <laughs> well, yes. What is, deeply, deeply. what is your opinion about her desire not to take the vaccine and her claim that she has found on the Internet cases of activation, obviously of henoch-chonaline purpura, by the vaccine? Okay, so here's the key word. There's, there's the key word. They've asked for your opinion, so we're waiting. No, no, no. Let, before we get there. Oh, before we get there. Uh, Bill's going to give you the medical reasons. Okay. I'm going to give you the other medical reasons. Okay. They're waiting. All I hear is, what is your opinion? I'm getting out of the way. Yeah. Go. Well, we all, I keep talking about this, we all have agency, which means we're in charge of ourselves and our bodies. Right. Okay. In medicine, we have this thing called informed consent. And we even went through a, a real serious period of it about, I don't know, 15 years ago, Bill, where you, you were supposed to document in every chart, every note, that you reviewed all the risk benefits of the medicines you were prescribing that day. Okay. So you were informing the patient of what they were receiving. That's when the pharmacy made, started putting those nine pages nine of pages stuff out. clicked to every one of your prescriptions. So, and, and basically, it's, it's a, 
uh, a point of ethics where we are informing people and they make a choice. You don't, you don't, you can't take somebody to surgery without them signing a consent document. Right. You can't do a procedure on them without them signing a consent document. It's what we do, except for now. Okay. Number two, the uh, vaccine is not what it was. Okay. Built for the first few variants, now we have a new variant. It's last year's vaccine for this year's virus. Okay. It doesn't stop transmission, it doesn't stop disease, and it doesn't stop death. Now, it may lower them. We're not really being given the numbers on that. It probably does lower them, and it probably is still very good, and I recommend it for my high-risk patients. But I absolutely, and I think Bill and I will agree on this, do not believe in experimenting on children and, and ladies of childbearing age. And so when you force a vaccine on them that it does not have long-term consequence, we don't know the long-term consequences of this medicine, and against their will, and you also take recourse away from them, that they can't come after you if you mess them up, you're in a very bad place. All right, let's get back to work here. Now, Henox <laughs> Online Purple, we're going to go into HSP. In in just a minute, because you've, we've never discussed this in some five or six years before. Put that first one up here. <clears throat> Henoch Schoenlein Purpura presenting post-COVID-19 vaccination. So this woman has told her staff that she's found, quote, on the Internet. Well, and this isn't the Internet. This comes out of PubMed. So... Mm -hmm. There, there's dozens of these. Okay, you can pull that down. I'm going to show a couple of pictures of Henoch Schoenlein purpura patients and what their skin looks like. But this, this diagnosis is reached, I would say, essentially 100% by the family uh, physician, pediatrician, family practice doc, or less often internal medicine because this is generally a, a disease... disease. Yeah except it occurs in adults, but yeah. we're going to talk about it here in a minute. But this, this occurs in children and adolescents. It generally follows an episode of a common cold or a flu or something. And it also has been known forever to follow a flu shot or various other immunizations. So it's not unique to the COVID immunization. So put that first one up there. Now, and if that's you look, in color, the audience is going to yeah, see. Yeah, it. Well, well, just, he gets to see all yeah. this. So basically, you this, you know, this, this, you see this a lot. I mean, these people got these little bruise things on their legs. Get that next one up there. Now, this is a little bit more serious. I want to say it, 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 I'm not a dermatologist, but I've, I've studied it. You know, when you have these things, something on the your heel or the bottom of your foot, yes, it's a whole lot different than on your anterior legs. You can pull that down. If you just took it every more our age than the young kids now, because we were out of doors in the summertime from the time sun came up until the daggum uh, fireflies had gone to bed, you know, and we were wandering around with us barefoot and stuff, and our legs looked like that half the summer from chigger bites and everything else. So that's a little bit different than, than today when people are on a, on a, on a machine. So our private, put that next one up there. Our primary care doc is going to see this patient and they're going to have, you got that up there? They're going to have a rash that's got normal platelets. That's something like this can happen with hematologic disorders. I see, man, that's a bad looking rash. I mean, what, what have you been doing? Second, they quite frequently will be complaining of abdominal pain because what's in the skin is actually going on inside the gut. Third, they will generally have abnormal urine because what's going on on the skin and inside the gut is going on inside the kidney. You can pull that down now. But the disorder has no treatment. So, what's this? Survival curve. Put up the oh, algorithm. 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 No, Al you don't have a survival curve. Here. You got an algorithm. I, got, I, got, I don't know why I said that. All right. Now algorithm. All right. The survival but, curve is if I survive. Okay. Now, so he, so this patient's in Ray's office. Right. First thing he does is so. Can you go give me a urinalysis? Mm -hmm. 
If that urine is totally 100% clear, it is unlikely that this is Henoch shown line purple. But if they're normal platelets, some of them, they don't have to have so the rest of that, you, you can pull that thing down now. But this just works down through the, uh, works down through all of this and what you're supposed to do with it. But basically, you send you're at, the bottom, at the bottom it says discharge with advice and follow up, meaning you don't hospitalize them and there's not any treatment. You say, look, this is a post viral illness. I want you to go home, come back in here in about four days, come back in a week, and this should go away in four to six weeks. And now, unfortunately, most fortunately, most of these totally clear within four to six weeks. But they can. What did they say here? Yeah. This woman's renal disease, which that's the serious part. That's the serious With part. renal failure, did not clear for a full year. That's unusual. But it's not unheard of, okay? All right. So basically, what we have here, here put that next one up and then we'll, we'll take it down here. Some, sometimes these people that have got the disease, why you have to keep bringing them back is they will develop what's called intersusception of the bowel, meaning that the gut kind of turns in on itself, and that becomes a surgical disease. Or they look just fine when they came in with the rash, but a week later their blood test for kidney failure starts going up or their blood pressure goes up or whatever. So it's not an innocuous disease, even though... 99% of the time it's gone, well not 99, probably 90% of the time it's gone in four to six weeks. Okay, pull that down. So the question around this patient is, I am going to give them a note. Nobody knows that you, that if you had it before, how much more, how much more liable you are to it again, but all of these cases that are in the literature are adults who got the COVID vaccine because remember now that I'm children, kids. children and adolescents weren't getting it. So Ooh. these are people who, and there's legions of them, mm -hmm. and, and and it's nothing unusual about it. This is frequently followed flu shots in the past, and it generally always, if it's not after an immunization, follows some sort of a viral or other illness. So I'm going to say that this childbearing age woman who wants to have more kids not only has a vulnerability in terms of maybe getting Henoch-Schonlein purpura again, which gets her kidneys and gets her into chronic long-term kidney failure, but I'm writing, in fact, like I did, I wrote it on Wednesday before I left, uh, Tuesday before I left, but I'm not confident that that actually is going to protect her because it's got to get through the infection control committee at her institution, and they probably have a lot of people on there that know more about the infection part of it than I do, but at least I gave them what I thought was a good idea. I, well, I, I sure hope they listen to you. <laughs> um, they, they don't, you know, they're not the ones with their hands on this patient or, or knowledge of this patient. If I had a case. I have to say I've never seen this patient either, though. Um, I, have, I had a case. Um, wait, wait just a minute though but but you've said you've never seen this patient but the people that are going to decide are not seeing this patient also they're correct just, ah, they're just going to get it. they're going to they're get just going to get the information basically like you got this morning i hope they do as much to find out as exactly, I did. exactly exactly and we don't know if they will research as and much do as what i you did. did i'm well, sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you but well, I, okay i just want to what's your program you know, that you i have can, a case no, no, no. i had a case of this <laughs> And I'll go through the uh, particulars of her in just a second, but I, I don't know why folks are not as offended as I am. Maybe, maybe everyone is. They don't have a right to make this lady do anything she doesn't want to do. I'm no, sorry. but they but they do have the right to say you can't work in our hospital unless you get the shot. And she'll have to go somewhere else to work, yeah. and then she has to worry about. Because now we just let's get, let's don't spend much time on this. But there are eight thousand six hundred Air Force people who haven't been immunized. And many of them are having, they've done, they've done so for religious reasons. Now, the Air Force apparently has gone back and said they've got to prove that since they turned 18 and became able to, to, to decide how they're going to live their life, they have to have 
adhered to that to the religion all along and gone to the feast and done everything else and they can't just say it i'm pulling up my religion and they, I can you mean they can't fill out the back of a matchbook cover and then become no. a, a priest all right no. let me let me let me ask you this question though i want to go with something here you said immunized okay no way stay with me you said how many in the air force i think it's eight thousand six hundred. all right but you said there are eight thousand six hundred that are not immunized okay is it a flu shot or is are you getting immunized? Just answer the question, sir. Answer the question you've been asked. Okay. Is well, it the flu you, shot or have you been immunized? They've been immunized against the COVID. You can't use No, your, no, you yes, can't. Yes, you can't. You, you cannot. You, he must be a politician now. Yeah. Is All it right. a flu shot or no, immunized? No, we're talking about the COVID-19. The point I'm I making, know, I are know they required to take a flu shot? Are is yes. your, they are yeah, every, they, the they, military? They, is yeah. Required. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, All they right, are. Right. They are required to take flu. I don't just. Hey, okay. listen. You know. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 wait, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to tell you. I gave the plague vaccine before we went to Vietnam, and I told you that everybody who gets plague vaccine run, runs a temperature. Plague vaccine would kill you because your temperature could get 105. Now, there weren't that many that died, but plague vaccine's the worst thing you ever had in the world, and everybody who went to Vietnam had to have it. They all had to have a shot in the butt of okay. gamma globulin. So you the know military, but just go back. Everything you've ever seen in the military from World War I on, you're standing up, going through a line, and going bang, 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 and immunizing them against everything creeps and crawls. All right, I want you to, before I start this next question, I want you to put that first picture up. Which one you have there? Why do we have to see the Rangers this morning? Well, we're seeing Sean Avery. Okay, we'll go with Sean Avery. Take a real good look at his eye. I see his you eye. remember Sean He's Avery? He's a hockey player, yeah. Well, not only that, but he was a fighter, wasn't he? Yes. All right, so just pull Sean Avery I, I down. That's the same thing, isn't it? What? Hockey player and fighter? No, I, no, I no, no, it's know. not. No, 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 you ah. got people, don't touch it. Don't. This is a very lengthy question, and I'm going to go Gretzky through Gretzky used to... Skate around in circles and why, watch it. Why Mark every Met, once in a while he pull at somebody's jersey through the gloves on the on the. This ice. is okay, this ahead. is a really good question, but it's lengthy. My husband's 67 years old with no health problems except a 17 year history of indolent non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, originally diagnosed when his barber noted a small lymph node swelling in the mid back of his neck at the hairline. We've had two of those we've discussed over the years. <laughs> It was biopsied and labeled as follicular non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and at the time, a CT scan was negative all over his body, and he was treated with observation, which I've told you before we do. We have moved five times since diagnosis, and over the years, he has developed what is called stage zero chronic lymphocytic leukemia and has been treated with observation. Two weeks ago, we discussed exactly that. He is not the least bit sick. He plays golf, rides a motorcycle, and plays adult league high-quality traveling softball. So this guy's an athlete. Over the last five years, we have lived in Jacksonville, and he has been at Mayo Clinic until 18 months ago. And they have been continuing to watch his white blood cell count. There is not a record that he had any scans in the past seven years, and he did not have one at Mayo. Since moving to the mountains, his PCP has noted a large spleen. Okay, primary care doc examined the guy. That was easily felt by the law, the oncologist. Had a PET scan, confirmed a big, the, the big um, spleen. Now, the oncologist wants to treat my husband with pills and a few months of rituximab. That's that antibody we've talked about before. It's not chemo because of the risk of spleen rupture. Not treating the leukemia, not treating lymphoma, trying to do something about the big spleen. My husband feels great but did admit to the oncologist that when he bends over to the left to tie on his motorcycle boot, he can feel pressure in the left side of his abdomen. After they found a CT from seven years ago when we lived in California and his spleen was minimally enlarged at 14 centimeters, 
what do you suggest that we do? Well, now we know 14 centimeters was a small spleen. Now he's got a massive spleen that occupies most of his upper abdomen. We know that because he gets pressure when he leans forward. Otherwise, he wouldn't know it. All right, pick up that next, that next picture. We're going to talk about the spleen and spleen rupture, and then we're going to go back to this guy. Who's, what's, this, what's this one? Let me see. I, I got the, the Rangers there. Rangers are over now. We already saw the Rangers. Sean Avery. Now he's a fighter. Right. Now Hutch, who you got here? I don't, you got Carl Pavono. He's a uh, pitcher. Okay. Now he's not a fighter, is he? You never know. He might. He might hit somebody. Give him a little chin music. They rush the mound. I nothing, mean, you asked. You, you never, nothing happened. No, he's not a fighter. Nothing happened to him at all that anybody knew anything about. Right. And so we're going to come back. Sean Avery got whacked in a fight. Within, yes. he played the rest of that game, but he been getting pressure in his shoulder, and you know his spleen came out that night. Yes. So we're going to put Carl down. Basically, here's what the issue is. Pick up that first, that next picture. That one's got the little tiny spleen tucked under. Spleen's not, the normal spleen's about the size of a pear. Okay. And it sits right up underneath right. your 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 rib cage there. Pull that down. What's that? It's an algorithm. 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 He says algorithm. <laughs> All right. So, talking about splenic rupture, over here, what we're basically thinking about when we think about splenic ruptures 99% of the time, first spleen rupture I knew anything about was at age six, when my friend across the street was hanging from his feet from the jungle gym bars and fell off and hit the ground, and late in the nighttime got pain in his abdomen and began to go sick and went in shock and ran down to Piedmont Hospital and Bill Whitaker took out his spleen. I was six years old. So that was, uh, what, uh, 75 19, years ago. Huh? 1900? Yeah, 1900. Now, now right. my favorite uh, spleen rupture is uh, Houdini. Yes. Houdini has spleen yeah. rupture. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So but what are you doing? I don't what you're doing here. So we, here we go. You got two types of spleen rupture. You got the guy that has been playing football or or hockey or something, and then you've got the spleen rupture where nothing happened. Some of those are diseased spleens. This is a disease. I just spleen. wanted to tell you. I just wanted to throw in there because you brought up athletes. Two, yeah. two athletes. Chris Sims, Phil Sims's son, quarterback. He was a quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He had his spleen removed after a. Well, what, other, what other more common syndrome gets gets your spleen removed, or you get or you get taken out of sports? But kissing disease, mono, really your spleen big po post mono. I think it's monomegaly. Yeah, and the spleen. No, I rupture. just wanted to Google that because I know I I, I couldn't remember, remember which quarterback. One. Okay, got it. So anyway, the normal spleen can rupture and no known cause. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a huge disease spleen over here. Right. Okay, I'm going to tell you about two two athletic events that I am aware of that I have been involved in that are tragic. People won't under, people won't remember, but it used to be that professional golfers traveled from match to match in a Cadillac. They drove. They didn't fly because it wasn't right. a bunch of flying. And athletes that could fly when they had aircraft. Flew on private, uh, pl flew on commercial airlines. <clears throat> the 24 Hours of Le Mans, a very well-known uh, family in Atlanta who was very wealthy, had a son that was a, an internationally known, famous race car driver. He had a crash at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, was not injured, Got on an Air France flight from Monaco to Paris, an Air France flight from Paris to New York, and died in first class of a ruptured spleen. He had not had any symptoms at all in the 12 or 16 hours after the event, and he died. Okay. Now, we're going to show this next now, picture. I, Go ahead. Let me just put a little question mark in there. I, you know, I don't know this fellow or anything about him, but I have stoic patients. 
Yes. And they're not going to complain. No, that's right. He, I mean, he may have had symptoms. And he's oh, he, but he didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Well, that's the, you brought me to my next picture, yeah, Ray. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now look at this. Got the next one. Got the whole body in there. This is the problem. Guy may not even remember what he did 12 hours ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, an active person. This thing, this spleen is tucked up under there next to the stomach, liver, lung. So if he's got pain up under here when he takes a deep breath, that family doc might focus on pleurisy because that'd be the same symptom. Mm -hmm. Or if he's got pain in here and he's burping and everything, they say, well, you know, you need to take some Tums or Rolaids. Basically, there are so many other things going on in there that you have to have a high index of suspicion. Pull that one down. And this is the tragedy. When you have ruptured your spleen like this, smashed, you got it up there, see the bottom left? When you've brought that thing like that, that guy's in deep trouble. His, his blood's going down, and he's got tachycardia. I mean, he knows his spleen's ruptured, and that happened, he, there's no doubt about it. That guy's gonna come off the ice, he's gonna be sick, or he's gonna come out of that car wreck or something, and he's going straight to the hospital. This one over here on this side, where you have, it's actually torn, you're going, he's going to have a bad abdominal pain. Into his groin. Yeah. It, and yeah, but this one, where it's a small laceration, or even that one over there, you can pull that down now. Unless it's big enough, so if it's just loose, dropping a few little drops of blood, you know, kind of like a oozing, oozing, and then it, then over t time it'll start b bleeding more. That's a big deal. And that can happen many, many hours after you have had this event. So let's go back to here. This guy is at real risk. And the treatment for chronic lymphocytic leukemia or follicular low-grade lymphoma, it's the same disease. Remember, whether it's predominant in blood or predominant lymph nodes, it's the same lymphocyte, is that pill we talked about a few weeks ago, a brutinib. You, take a, you just take a pill every day. And rituxan would be given three or four times over a month, and that would shrink it down pretty quick. He could stay on his motorcycle. He could keep playing softball. He could complete, keep doing what he was doing. If he does nothing, I think he's got to park his motorcycle. He's got to stop playing baseball. In other words, he's got to change the way he's living. And so I recommend you take a period a of time till his spleen gets back to normal. Well, it won't go back. I said if he's not going to do anything. Oh, if he's not going to do anything. Not going to take anything. any yeah, treatment. He's, he's, he's got to park it. Yeah. yeah, and that's not. It's just a quality of life issue. Right. So yes, he could still be observed. But if he does still be observed, it would be easy to observe it. He'd have to be cautious, and he would not be able to do what he wants to do. There, and that's it. All right. Um, that brings us to. The news of the day, right? Is that where we're at? What does that say? Oh, no COVID vaccines. No, COVID vaccines don't make you glow. Well, there goes I've my... turned off the light several times and I'm not glowing. Where'd Glucker go? <laughs> All right. I just want the, the conspiracy theory about the... COVID vaccine you will glow in the dark? having luciferin in it making you glow in the dark and you can take a thing up on it and it'll grow or it's a magnetized you go up against a refrigerator. Did you see me in your courtyard last night in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the truth of the, the, the I, I, it's sort of funny to me that science has actually had to address this crazy theory that it's got particles in it and it's got stuff in it that make you glow in the dark and that luciferian is actually named after lucifer the devil what's luciferian it's what makes the it's what makes the firefly lightning bug glow anyway it's it's it was i thought that was that was kind of funny and then the bottom one arizona man infects his dog and cat with covid19 is there anything unusual about that? <laughs> yeah, Is there? I, yeah. Not, not, not really. Oh, okay. I don't because know. remember, every every animal has their own COVID, it, COVID oh, okay. species, right. yeah. 
and we've already know that the that the primates in the zoos they're going around and immunizing the monkeys and the gorillas in the zoos which is dumb to me but anyhow point of that thing is this this is a this is like the common cold and i don't and why in the world they were testing his cat and his dog for the virus they 91 of them were sick apparently it just it, it's just ludicrous to me maybe because the delivery guy wouldn't come because the dog <laughs> Might bite him and dog. All right, I'll watch it. it. I, I want. All right, I want to ask just, you how many. I'm trying to go with something here. How many? How many? Two percent. How many? No. How many deaths in oh. Fannin County this week? Well, we were up to what? 104? No, no, we were up to last week. Like was 106 last week. Well, uh, 106. I what is it this week? I don't know. It's 106. Oh, 106. So the weekly average was zero. Zero. All right. And we're so two, that brings two, me to this one. Remember, two percent I have rate. said a few weeks ago that deaths are going to come down now, that right. the thing's coming down. And last week we were at six. The week before that we were at 4.8. Yeah. So we've been bouncing right around five. What's the lowest it's ever been? 1.7. Yeah, it was, it was one something, yeah. Okay, we're at 2 now percent it's now. two. Right. Two is versically 1.7. So in the state of Georgia, the positive COVID test rate was 2% in the last day or two. So it's back to where it was July 1st. And you? What are you you're sitting over there waiting, waiting patiently. Waiting to pounce. I feel it. I've been with you for a little while. I'm waiting to pounce. You're waiting to say well, something. Well, he, I, used to, I don't know when I don't we, know can, well, he, can we go back to normal. He watched the World Series. Yeah. Oh, I did too. Okay, now there were 48,000 people screaming next to each other, and you watch the pictures of those poor little kids standing in line going to the lunch counter with the daggum face you. mask I, on I, I, six feet apart. Now, what kind of sense does it make? To have college 80, football has 80,000 to 100,000. Yeah. And you're not counting the ones outside. Yeah, right. Okay, that just don't go in. Well, the if, ones that are selling it, you the hot dogs. Yeah, well, if any of us have been to a college football game, there's the group that don't make it in. Well, no, <laughs> they're people that don't even plan to make it in. Yeah, they they're there exactly. to tailgate and they have TVs And they got outside. TVs set up and everything. Yeah. They don't plan to go Plus, in. Plus, well, you saw those people down at, at uh, Truist Park. Right. There were 22,000 in, in the there. battery. In the battery. Yeah. Right. So Well, they, they couldn't all fit in the battery, by the way. Right. I think well, that Bill, fit 12,000. I'm not here to answer this question. I just, it just, I'm just like a friend of mine uh, emailed me last night and said, has the world gone crazy? And I said, well, I think so. And I said, my plan is if the guys with the white coat show up, I'm going to run. You mean with the padded, with the yeah. padded, what you call yeah. it? Straight jacket. Uh, so anyway, so that's my plan. But any, But getting back to my point. We have uh, a d disease, a viral infection. We are into our second year of it. Okay? The first year we had no vaccine. This year we have a vaccine. The first year death's total is less than this year's death total. What does that tell you about the vaccine? Vaccine does not protect you. From well, no doubt. It also is spread more. Now, it, you, there, there's two yeah. explanations for that. You started with one case. Yeah. Start with right? one case. Then you got two cases. And but so we had no vaccine. Yeah. Zero. That's right. Okay. Uh, the point is, is that this it's up to people to do with their body what they want to do with their body. And they should inform themselves as that patient informed herself about her HSP disease and risk of it and she should get a physician her physician to give her guidance and then she should follow that guidance anybody else is a is a dictator and I, I'm real afraid that if Biden's uh, I, I know we're following suit against Biden but if every employer that has any kind of a federal contact or contract or anything else with 100 employees has to be vaccinated or tested every week vaccinated or tested every week they gave them the option of the testing every week which i've said repeatedly if you'll test every week that's fine but i don't like the idea that these poor guys in the military aren't going to be given the option of being tested every week and that they've either got to do it or go back of course they could come out the, the sheriff's department's hiring you know uh come out and go into law enforcement testing was more effective than the vaccine right now Currently, the way the vaccine is situated, if you really wanted to stop it, you would make testing abundant. Okay, uh, 
don't know his don't remember his name right off. Mayor of Los Angeles. Yeah. Can't say his name. Fully vac fully vaccinated. I'll use the words fully vaccinated. <laughs> uh, fully vaccinated has COVID. Okay. Well, that's not unusual. He yeah, was okay. fully all vaccinated right, right, and had right. it. Okay. Uh, Aaron Rodgers got COVID not vaccinated. Yeah. Okay. Did Aaron Rodgers get COVID? Did he Did he contract COVID from maybe someone vaccinated? Could, on, on could easily have. Back, right? Yes. Well, nobody knows the answer to that question. So, so I, I will say this. For me, and I don't know, I don't want to say I'm speaking for anybody, but I, maybe I am. Trust trust they they violated everything they violated trust and no matter what when you get with if you talk to a therapist seriously if trust is broken in the relationship that's the hardest thing to build back but is the trust if you don't and have we, trust in our bureaucracies in a democracy right. we're in trouble and and now they're the, wanting what, us oh, to well, trust let's, let's, them. Let, okay i want i want to interrupt you do you understand what i'm saying yes sir i the pre-election polls had me losing all right yeah. But we won. Now, I went, it was a joke, of course. <laughs> but what is the confidence level in the most recent poll of the American citizen in our government? Democrats, confidence was in the 30s or 40s. Independents was in the 20s and 30s. And Republicans was in the teens. So nobody, including Democrats, right. have greater than 50% uh confidence and trust in our institutions well that's awful that's awful so you have that problem in the institutions trust is very important but but you also have just plain logic okay if we know and it's stated repeatedly what we just said a minute ago that the vaccine does not protect you from contagion you can be vaccinated and you can spread this thing and they have a sign on the restaurant saying unvaccinated not welcome what difference what, does it make? What difference does it make? The vaccinated person going in there can spread it just as much as the unvaccinated. Logic is being just totally twisted here. And, and normal, smart people said, that's easy. These people are lying to me. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's trust. It's, it's very important. It's like in Chicken society. Little. Uh, hey, I want you to show your T-shirt. I, I told you you can't expose yourself on TV. See that? Yeah. Like get Dr. Whaley. All right. Over just, my heart. All right. So what, what I'm getting before we close is, you know, I said the other day. Yeah, I got to go do a bone marrow. It's, it's, not, it's not COVID. It's how they weaponized COVID. I mean, we, we, we the three of us. Yeah. That, the three okay, of us have been. Positive. All right. Now I got the, the three of us have been together from day one. And you two, like, I know there's doctors all across the United States, but you two have done more research time that I know of to actually figure out how we work through this, go on about our lives, how do we handle this. The two of you have done an amazing well, job all the way through. I, well, I, you just hit on something that I think is really important because I don't think neither Ray nor I know what's going to happen next. But right. I understand that there was an exchange between Napoleon and Rand Paul yesterday <laughs> on, yes. on C-SPAN yes. or it was somewhere. something to be seen. Well, but I understand that, I mean, and I didn't see it because I was working for a living, but my understanding is that Rand Paul, after being <clears throat> diminished by Napoleon, said, time will tell which of the two of us is correct. correct. And I hate to say it, but we're going to have to wait till this cake cooks or this plant comes out to find out whether we got beanstalk or a bunch of kudzu here. I used right. to have, go ahead. No, well, just the... Let's move on here. No, I used to have I used to have my biggest and best customers, and that's the American people. Okay, I used to have my biggest and best customers, and one of our sales staff would go in and offend them, right? And I get the phone call. Um, I'm I'm closing my account. I'm never doing business with you again. And you know, unless you fire that no good person that come in here and just offended me. Okay. Now I'm going to say something you're not going to like, but it's called the truth. So <laughs> I would say, you know what? You won't have to deal with that. But I want to fight. Got it. So I call a salesperson in. Hey, I'm moving you. Uh, you know, I'm moving well, you to Siberia for a while. No, okay? no, we're just taking that account away from you. Give yeah, it the right. we're moving you to Siberia, <laughs> and then the new salesman, and and I. 
I, I would say to the customer, hey, you know what? I uh, yeah, that person they they they're not they're not with us anymore. They're, we moved. Well, them you out shouldn't of the way, say right? that. Well, wait, we shouldn't say that. Maybe that's not exactly. But where I'm getting at is somehow, some way, Fauci should have been removed a long time ago. He should have been removed as the face a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, but that would require a competent president. Anyway, let's move on. Do you on understand here. what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's you understand? Yeah, under, I've got, I, you're really getting me going here. So, uh, you know what I say? <laughs> Every day you got to laugh at something. All right, go oh, ahead. that's good. Let's laugh at something. <laughs> I'm and, sorry. And we're, we're still close enough to Halloween that I can tell one of my cannibal jokes. All right, tell one of your cannibal jokes. Cannibal so, uh, jokes. You know, you got a big old pot of soup, <laughs> fire on it, a bunch of people sitting around, bones in their hair and everything. In the, in the middle of the soup is a clown. <laughs> One cannibal looks at the other one. He says, "Does that taste funny to you?" <laughs> okay, well, let's go do a bone marrow. This has all been brought to you. We want to thank Georgia Cancer Specialists yes. affiliated with Northside Cancer Center for this segment, which I'm not sure they're going to want to accept responsibility for today. But we've enjoyed. Now, hey, it listen, I, I'm just. We're just. You know, we're just talking what people talk. I know, but you forgot to f say it four times during well, the program here. I didn't forget. Yeah, you it's did. all over you the neglected. screen. Is it on the screen? They're seeing it the whole time. It's on the screen. You gotta I say the words though. The blind I, people that are listening that can't read the screen. I know you didn't just I know. <laughs> we're gonna end on <laughs> Thank I know Georgia Cancer. Yes. Uh, oh, I know you didn't just say that. You have to get to work. I got bone marrow to do at 9 o'clock. Well, get on out here. Get to it. Thank you, Dr. William Whaley, always, and Dr. Raymond Tidman, and, yes, Georgia Cancer Specialist, affiliated with Northside Cancer Center. We appreciate you. We're going to take a break and uh, all-star political panel right after this. Well, I hope that blind man's not.